how to get the best results in ControlNet with LoRa. Hello, my friends, how are you doing? If you're like me, your mind is completely blown by ControlNet. But of course, with Table Diffusion, as always, it's complicated, there's a lot of different settings. So let's check them out. Also, here's a guide from me how to install ControlNet in Automatic 11.11 and what the different models mean. So let's check out here Automatic 11.11. And as you can see, I have an image here rendered, of course. And down here, we have the source image with the body posing. We want to apply that. But we have to choose our model first. And not all of these models are built the same way. So I ran through a test with these same settings and you can see, for example, Chroma 5, not so great for that. You might get better results with a different style. So this is specifically in that case for realism. Now, the next one is Deliberate version 1.1. This is actually pretty good. It looks very nice. Next, we have Dreamlike. Maybe it could be better with a lower CFG scale or some other adaptions, but overall my head looks very long and it doesn't look that close to me. As the next models, we have here Dream Shaper with the VAE baked into it and that gives a really nice result. I like the colors. It looks a little bit more like a digital drawing or like concept art, but overall very beautiful. Epic Diffusion actually also not too bad a little bit bland maybe but this could be fixed with the prompt f222 i was surprised it isn't going to be better but it's not too bad either although the detail in the face could be higher then we have your model shoot 1.0 not too bad. I like that the lighting here is more in a quality of a professional shooting or a magazine shooting. So that's actually pretty nice as a detail. Then we have realistic vision and this is one of my new favorites. Now we have here version 1.3. Some people tell me they get actually better results with version 1.2. So you might want to try that out also. And then we have stable diffusion vanilla 1.5 pruned and pruned EMA only. Vanilla means the original version, by the way. Both of them not so great, doesn't look like me at all. So that's kind of strange, but also not surprising because these other models are specifically trained on portrait photography. Now here again, we have a closer look on the models that I find the best for this purpose. And you can see that there are actually slight differences in what you are getting. Now, as I said, the Dream Shaper model with the baked VAE is very nice from the lighting, a lot warmer, a lot more expressive, while the two other models are more looking like actual photos, but the lighting is not as warm, as nice or as dramatic as with the Dream Shaper model. Overall, I very much like the realism and the quality and also this kind of HDR look where you have a very deep dynamic range. It's very nice when you look here at the clothing specifically. Let's zoom in here a little bit more. You see here how good the clothing looks with the realistic vision model. Now over here with the deliberate model, it's not bad, but I would say that my suit that I'm wearing here is a little bit overexposed and the texture of the suit material doesn't look as good. So as a conclusion here, it is as always with Stable Diffusion very important that you choose the right sources for the image you want to create. So when you want to have, for example, digital painting or anime or realistic photo or a 3D style, you want to choose a model for that, but also a textual inversion, a LoRa model, a Dream Booth model for that specific reason so that the model has all the artistic and quality expressions in there that you want to have. So in this case, I decided on the realistic vision version 1.3 model. Now the next thing you want to decide is the sampling method. Again, I ran a test here to show you these results. And you can see here at the start, we have Euler A and Euler, which both look very good. I really like that. LMS for some reason gave me an error here. It doesn't give me a good result. Hoin is also pretty nice. You see that small details are changing. Actually, you can also see that Hoin has a warmer light overall. DPM2 worked great. DPM2A gave me an error as a result. DPM++ 2SA and DPM++ 2M both are very nice, but you can see that there are slight differences between them. All of them are using the same prompt, same setting, same seat, by the way. Now, interestingly enough, DPM++ SDE looks a lot more like the Dream Shaper model from the warmth and the expressiveness. 
Here you can see both of them side by side and it's really interesting how close they are. Although the realistic vision model on the right side is still more photorealistic. Next we have DPM fast which gave me an error, DPM adaptive which works great, LMS Keras gave me an error, it looks very overbaked, this might be because of the CFG scale so you might be able to fix that. DPM2 Keras again a great result but DPM2A Keras gave me an error. Here we we have the DPM++ models for 2SA, 2M and then also SDE. Now interestingly enough SDE again has a very nice and warm light, 2M also has a warm light but a little bit cooler and 2SA is the coolest but all of them work very great and have very nice details. Last but not least we have DDIM that looks a little bit overbaked, this might be better with a lower CFG scale and PLMS which gave me an error again. Overall I had the impression that I get the most consistent and easiest results with Euler A as a sampler. Of course as you know the sampler is set here in the sampling method so I choose it from that long list here. Now the next thing that is very important for us is down here in the control net settings of course you want to enable it and you want to choose your preprocessor and the model but then you also have to decide the weight and that can have a huge impact. So here I went from a weight of 1 downwards because over a weight of 1 it sticks in my experience too close to the image and what you can see here I have overlaid here the original image when you compare it to the 1.0 weight this is very close not just from the position of the body but also from the physique and in this case also the skull shape of that person. Now of course there's a little bit of a render error here because that person has hair I don't have hair. This could be fixed with the prompt but this is about how close this sticks to the original image. So in this case you see that I look pretty slender here but my face looks different because the skull shape is different. Now you can see the lower I set the value the more my skull and it is very interesting to see here that the AI is adapting the body shape to the face shape. So the rounder my face gets here the more my body gets a little bit beefier and I found overall for myself that I get the best results with 0.4 where my skull looks a little bit longer than in real life but it also in this case with that photo looks a little bit better. 0.3 also looks very good, it's even more realistic and 0.2 is actually more to what I look in real life but not what I want to look in an AI render where of course I want to look a little bit better than in real life. Then we have 0.1 and you can see I'm gaining more weight than I actually have and my head for some reason gets pretty round. And then at 0.0 we got the beef master, this guy knows what's good, everything good. But also he looks a lot heavier than I actually do. Now the interesting thing here is even with a weight of 0.0, .0 this still takes the position of the body into consideration. Next we want to look into our prompting because this is very important for the quality of our results. Now one of the things I absolutely would suggest to you is that you go to the page of the model especially on Civit AI and down here you have this little eye, you want to click on that and this gives you the prompt for that image, the negative prompt and the settings. It is really important to check out how the prompting was done to get these stunning results with the model because each model needs a little bit of a different prompting and with this you have a very good starting guide on how to get better results. Now when we look at this specific image here, when you look at the prompt on the right side, you can see that it says in round brackets high detailed skin colon 1.2. This means this gives a lot of weight to the detailed skin. Now if you would use this together with your LoRa model, this might give you worse results because there is so much weight put on the detailed skin that there is less ability for your LoRa model to actually shine through. So in this case what you want to do here is for the high detailed skin to set the value for example to 0.5 or 0.8 but to overall lower that value. And for your LoRa model you want to set a value that is rather high. Now you want to experiment with that. For example I got pretty good results with 0.8 but I also got pretty good results with 1.1 which I have used actually as a value to render most of these test images. 
Also, I have a video here on how to install and use LoRa in Automatic 11.11. To get good and clean results with Stable Diffusion, it's also very important that you have a good negative prompt in here. And I would generally suggest that you look at these negative prompts again from these example pages because they have figured out a lot of very good tricks to get these amazing results. And when you compare a lot of them, you will see that there is a lot of terms in there that repeat and are used by a lot of users. So you know that they work really well, especially again for these specific results. So if you don't go for realism, you want to have another negative prompt. Now let's go down here for the settings that we want to use with Stable Diffusion. Now, of course, we have already talked about the sampling method, but there's also the sampling steps. Now, usually when you go with Euler A, and this is good if you also have a slower computer, you can go as low as 20 steps and still get amazing results. Some other sampling methods actually need a higher count of steps. For example, DDIM is probably better with 40 steps. In all of my examples, I turned off Restore Face and High Res Fix. But what you can see here is that I'm using a slightly higher resolution. So I'm not rendering with 512, I'm rendering with 640. The reason for that is because the higher resolution gives me more details in the image. And this can be very helpful, especially when you want to have an image that's photorealistic. And there's just more space for the AI to create a good image for you. Of course, at some point, the resolution is too high. So you might get worse results again. Now, here's a thing that is really important, and that is the CFG scale. When I was downloading the LoRa model for Jenna Ortega to use for this video, I suddenly got really bad results, even though everything was the same as with my images and my LoRa train model. Now, you can see here there's a lot of fragmentation in the face and the image overall looks overbaked. It turned out that the culprit was a too high setting for the CFG scale. Now, the interesting thing here is if you turn control net off, you get a fine result with that CFG scale, but with control net turned on, you get these problems. So I lowered my CFG scale to as low as four and as you can see here, I got much better, much more realistic results that also don't have any fragments in there and where the result isn't overbaked. Another trick you want to use here is to use first a random seat. So down here, you either click on this symbol or you write minus one in the field for the seat and then try out until you get a really good result. Now, when you found a result you like, scroll down a little bit and you can see that you get the seat number right here. Copy this over into the seat field here. And now with this seat fixed, you can play around with the other settings and try to slightly step by step improve your results. Now, of course, if the changes are getting too big, then the seat doesn't matter anymore because you still get a completely new image. So you want to get in small steps, small iterations. Now let's talk about the control net settings. Of course, you have here the pre-processing method and then the models. And I have in my video explained how to use all of that, what that means. So if you don't get the results that you desire with your renders, you might want to try any of these other methods and the same model. Below that, another important thing is to choose the canvas width and the canvas height. Now, what this actually does is it decides which part of the image and in what kind of resolution is it going to use it for the pre-processing and for the rendering here in the control net method. This is also where we have here the settings for our envelope outer fit, scale to fit, inner fit, and just resize. Now what the outer fit and the inner fit does is actually when you set here the resolution, this gives you a certain ratio and this is deciding if it's fitting it to the height of it or if it's fitting it to the width of it. And just resize will just resize the image to that resolution. In most cases, I would not suggest to use that. I generally didn't really find a big improvement by using higher resolutions here. So you can go here with the starting resolution of 512 and then set the height or the width, depending on horizontal or vertical image to the value that is close in ratio. Now, here's another interesting thing I want to show you, and this has to do with in painting. In this case, I'm using a different source image to render myself on it with the LoRa model. And I'm using different weights here. 
So in this case, I'm using a higher weight of 0.4 and I like the look of the body better, even though there's a little bit of a mistake here in the fingers. But you can also see in this image that my hat is elongated because the person in the original image has hair and this is stretching my skull to fit to that hair. So what I did here is to use the image with the 0.4 weight and then put that into in painting, mask out the hat and then use the same prompt to replace the head to a nicer shape. Now it's very interesting here that I'm not using control net for this. And still the position of the head is very similar to the original image. Now in this case, I'm using a diffusion value of 75%. Now in this case, I'm using a diffusion value of 95% or 0.95. And even though the head looks pretty good, it's looking in a different direction. Now in this case, I've turned on control net and I'm surprisingly getting a very similar result as without the control net. In this case, however, my denoise value is lower. So it is at 0.5 and my weight for control net is at 0.4. So I get the head shape that I like and also the positioning of the head is good. However, the interesting thing here is that for some reason, this is making a bright line at the lower part of my beard. Also, here's some advice for the in-paint settings you want to use. First of all, you want to go to in-paint, not to in-paint sketch. Then here you have a brush. You want to set the right size and then simply paint out the head. Scroll down and here you have multiple settings. I'm using crop and resize. I'm using original. So this is using the original image as the base on which to render on. Then I'm using here only mask. I'm usually setting the mask blur a little bit higher. Let's go here with 12 and then the only mask padding in pixels. You can also play with that. Set it a little bit higher. I go here, let's say with 44. With the rest of the settings, you can play around with the resolution. You can also set here a higher resolution to get a better and finer result for the face. Again, adjust the CFG scale to see what kind of results you're getting. You might also want to experiment in this case with a random seat. You want to adjust here the denoise strength to see the results you're getting and if you like them or if they even look close to the original. And for the seat, you can use the original seat, but you might also want to try to play with random seats because sometimes you get a lot better results with that. The control net settings are the same as I described before. And of course, you want to use the same source image here in that drop image area. Let me know in the comments what you think. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.